Um, I do a lot of our litigation, and um, our, we've had a pollinator protection program for uh, a long time now, and most recently we've been focusing on this connection between pesticides uh, and pollinators like bees uh, over the last few years. And we started doing that because, I don't know, five years ago or so, we started getting calls from our beekeeper members, and they would say, my bees are dying. Um, what, I don't know why, can you help us? Um, what, what, what can we do about this? Um, and nobody was really working on it really that much in the United States at that point. Uh, so we started really uh, focusing on that connection. And unfortunately, their reports were not just anecdotal. Um, because what the studies have shown now is that overwhelmingly in the last few years, uh, beekeepers here in the U.S. Uh, and across the world really have had dramatic declines uh, in their colonies, 40-50% annually, up to 100% in some cases uh, of bee die-offs. So we really have uh, a crisis here, uh, a second silent spring, uh, the specter of one uh, in any event. And, and what are we talking about? I mean, why, why do we care? Well, we care because, you know, bees are megafauna, they're, they're, they're great critters, but more than that, um, I guess as Paul Harvey might say, the, the old radio commentator, uh, that leaves out the rest of the story. Um, uh, you know, this is a food security issue. So here's some, here's some factoids for you, okay? We've got some materials at the front that, that we have there from our program. One in three bites of food that we eat, pollinated by bees, okay? One in three. Um, out of the 100 different crop varieties that produce 90% of our food, 71 of those pollinated by bees. Uh, in the United States, 95 different fruits pollinated by bees, things like cherries. Uh, things like blueberries, apples, cranberries, pumpkins, uh, almonds, uh, soy, things you wouldn't think necessarily. Um, so, as, as the, the title of the film uh, aptly notes, this is about way more than honey. Um, so, you know, this is a $20 billion industry if you like to put figures on kind of pollinator services, ecosystem services that uh, bees provide to us as an, ag as an agricultural economy. Um, so food security, one. Second, this is an environmental issue, obviously. Um, this is a keystone species. Bees do a lot more than just help us uh, produce food. 90% um, of all plants that flower require pollination. Um, bees are not the only pollinator that are, that are in decline here. Um, we've got other wild pollinators that are in just as bad shape or worse shape. Um, about 40 different pollinators are already listed on the U.S. endangered species list right now. Um, so, food security, environmental issue. So, in many ways, this issue is a microcosm of industrial agriculture. Uh, and I think that's why it's a really, uh, it's a great narrative uh, as far as talking about paradigm shifting and promoting sustainable alternatives, which is a lot of what we do at Center for Food Safety. So, why is this happening? Uh, and I think uh, there's multiple reasons. There's no silver bullet, uh, but the studies have shown time and time again that one of the critical components uh, of the bee die-off is uh, a particular class of pesticides uh, called neonicotinoids, uh, And this is a systemic persistent pesticide. It's a relatively new one, and it, it's different than traditional pesticides that are kind of spray-on pesticides, okay? This is a pesticide, uh, unlike ones that are surface applied, uh, that is absorbed throughout all of the plant. Uh, so it's in the roots, um, it's in, it's in um, the, the, the flower, it's in the pollen, it's in the nectar, uh, it's in the stem. So, as you might imagine, that creates different types of exposure and increased in exposure for bees and other pollinators. Um, and the beekeepers believe it is one of the leading causes of uh, co colony collapse disorder, or bee die off, pollinator crisis, whatever you want to call it. Um, and, you know, there's many products that are approved for neonic uh, application, but the leading one in the U.S. is the coating of corn seed, genetically engineered, not ready corn seed coated with neonics. So that's the vast majority of the use of this in the United States, which is absolutely the vast, the vast majority of most agricultural use in the United States. Now, Europe, um, unlike the U.S., has, has judged the science to be mature enough and convincing enough to put a moratorium on the use uh, of most of these neonics for crops that are pollinated by bees. In 2013, Europe did that, the European Union. So for two years, they've stopped, at least for two years, the use of uh, of these insecticides. Unfortunately, in the U.S., our government has not acted as responsibly uh, in this regard. Um, and instead, you know, these crops have remained on the market uh, for the last uh, 12, 12 years now. 
uh, without any further regulation. So, um, and during the q and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about more about our litigation, if, if you like, and, and what we're doing about that. But I think that's, a, that's enough for now, a good introduction, and I hope you enjoy the movie. I'm very happy to be here with you. So thank you for coming tonight. <laughs> I mean, you're a lawyer, so that you know there's what's behind this. And the theory about it. the bees, the mystery of the bees. Um, I mean, what's behind it? An industrial paradigm of production uh, that's very powerful and, and doesn't want to uh, reform its, its manner of operation because it will internalize uh, environmental costs such as pollinator impacts. So, yeah. Um, you know, the movie just touched on the aspect I'm mostly working on, which I mentioned at the outset, which is kind of pesticide impacts. I mean, it was implicit in a lot of it, and, and there was some spraying going on and, and, and some monologue, but it, I think it acknowledges and does a good job showing, as you, as you know, that this is a cumulative issue. And so anytime it's something like that, then that lends itself to being um, dismissed as a mystery or something that doesn't have a, a single answer. So, um, but yeah, I think the neonics are, are the newest and, and kind of the, uh, the issue that's really uh, been the straw that's broken the camel's back in many ways. Um, according to beekeepers, you know, that I work with and that we represent and, and what the studies show. Um, so, because, you know, a lot of this infrastructure has been in place for a while now. It's gotten exacerbated over time. Um, and more industrialized and bigger. As a, by the way, I don't represent beekeepers like the gentleman in the movie from California. <laughs> um, my, my plaintiffs are generally small uh, local beekeepers um, in, in the case that we have. So, um, but that case is, so the neonics essentially, to, to finish the story on that, I, I said I would, um, you know, we approved them in 2003 and it's this kind of coding on most things so the bees are exposed to it in many different ways, as I mentioned earlier. And uh, U.S. EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, when they approved it, they did what's called a conditional registration for it, which is just what it sounds like. It's, they allowed it to go on market even though the manufacturer of it there, in Syngenta, uh, didn't have all the evidence of safety. So they said, okay, you can market this, uh, these pesticides even though you don't have safety, but you have to promise you're going to do these studies um, and, and you know, you're going to submit them to us. And so, you know, that's called the conditional registration. It's pretty backward, uh, but unfortunately that's our pesticide law. So, um, that was in 2003, and it had been 10 years and they never did the studies. Guess what the studies were supposed to be on? Anyone? Anyone? Pollinator impacts, specifically bees. Um, so... In 2012, we filed a legal petition on it on behalf of a bunch of beekeepers and environmental groups like Sierra Club, Beyond Pesticides, uh, PANA, uh, Pesticide Action Network, and ourselves. And uh, EPA didn't uh, deny the petition. So last year, or this year, in March in 2013, we sued them. Uh, so Bear and Syngenta have intervened in the case. And so we've been litigating it all year, basically. And we're asking that they pull these off the market until they do the studies at, at a minimal. Right. Um, Seems pretty straightforward, right? Yes, it does uh, seem straightforward. Yes. Not that complicated sometimes, but anyway, so are that's they the case. Doing, are they doing the studies? No, they're not doing the studies. Uh, well, there's a lack of transparency for starters. Uh, so I'll know more. We have a big argument upcoming on January 24th. Um, so we'll, we'll, see how, we'll see how that goes. Um, but at the moment, it doesn't. Uh, we don't have any reason to believe that they are. Um, yes. Um, the, the movie was really fascinating, and they didn't mention too much in, about the actual, you know, producers of the pesticides and that sort of thing. You mentioned kind of a magic word, which is Syngenta, which is a target here. Tell us a little bit about the kinds of legal actions and w whether they can be applied here. Uh, you know, there recently been two county kind of uh, ordinance passed regarding pesticides, so... Yeah, definitely. Um, and we have a lot of information on our website, uh, centerforfoodsafety.org, and then we brought some, some things as well, I think. 
Um, so if you want to find out more, Hawaii Seed also, who's here and, and invited me to have a lot of information too. Um, Syngenta is one of the registrants. You know, there's about 15 companies that are the pesticide registrants of these neonicotinoid insecticides. Um, and uh, as I said, uh, mostly they're used on a lot of different crops, um, but the vast majority of the acreage is uh, corn seed. They, they coat the corn seed in it. And they do that because the engineered corn is particularly susceptible. Uh, they don't have to do that with organic corn, for example, just with um, the, the engineered corn, the round ready corn, uh, or you know, whatever it is, the herbicide resistant corn. So that stuff's being used here, we can assume. Yeah, I, I would assume so. It's been 95% of the corn in the U.S. is, is GE. So, uh, and then with regards to the county actions, I think it, it's a kind of, they're all related, right? I mean, the, it's part of this kind of industrial paradigm, as we were saying. So it's very positive what happened with Kauai and, and the Big Island and, and what's happening here. It's one of the reasons I'm here. Oh, great. Have there been bee colonies impacted here? That's a good question. I don't know. We don't have a plaintiff in our case. I'm sure that there are. That would be, that's just a guess, though. But uh, I have no reason to believe there wouldn't be. Um, since it, it, you know, the use of these pesticides, I'm sure, is just as prevalent, from my understanding, from the experts here. Thank you. Yes. How widespread is that practice of hand pollination that was shown in China? I yeah, it's pretty terrifying. I have imagery of that, but I'm really glad that it's here, and I hope it gets broadcast more widely. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, this is the first time I've learned of it. You know, I, it, it strikes me that it's just in China at the moment, but it's, it's a question of, I mean, you saw how uh, how things, the precipice things were on here um, and, and the way we've driven ourselves into that corner. So, um, yeah, but I like the quote from Einstein. That's, that's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> yes? Is it hopeful? Are the African bees going to be helping us? Yeah, I know, that's a good question too. I don't know the answer to that one. Um, it does strike me that um, having a relationship that was more symbiotic would be good <laughs> from an environmentalist perspective, right? So I'm, I'm in favor of that. On the other hand, uh, that whether that's a viable alternative or not, it, you know, most of my work has been focused on reforming the current paradigm and system. <coughs> Sorry, I don't have a better answer on that. Yes? Do you really think the American government can be No. Well, <laughs> no, I mean, I, I think we, we, you know, we do what we do because it's the right thing, right? You just have to be faithful. You don't always have to work. Yes? You know how they're separating the hives all these ways and then just randomly putting all these bees in different places? Isn't that... I mean, it's so unnatural seeming, and couldn't that affect the health of those boxes of bees too? That they're also they're not like genetically related, and then they smell different to each other, you know? Yeah, the stress is definitely a big factor, and, and I think the trucking, and there was a lot of scenes, and that I think that's yeah. we we've definitely heard that a lot, and I, I definitely think that's a big issue is the, the yeah. stress that the industrial production system puts on them. It's unnatural. It's not the way that it's supposed to be. It's not the way it is with natural pollinators, natural bees bumblebees, you know, um, wild honeybees. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's just a commodification of, of their existence in such a way that, you know, they're not built for it. Right. Yes? In a Swiss, a scene, what, what was it? Um, you know when they read, um, when this lady came over to the guy and said, the bees are not well, doing well, and had a disease, what kind of disease was it? Yeah, I think it was a, Bacterial disease. I wasn't. Sure. I didn't catch exactly what type it was. It looked like it was a bacteria of some kind. Mm -hmm. He was very sad, but he, he was. It was an honorable way that he that he disposed of them. You could tell he cared about them. I mm -hmm. thought. Yeah. Should they do like an environmental impact study? Like they shut down a lot of industries because right in the beginning, uh, like the shipping. Area that we had over here, why can't they do the same thing with, um, obviously, it's an environmental impact on with these bees and, and, and the connection with food. Why isn't that a strategy? Yeah, so in our great wisdom, our judicial system has decided that pesticide registrations are exempt from environmental impact statements, which are required for the wow. National Environmental Policy Act, NEPA. So, uh, so they don't have to, in other words. The, the courts have said that uh, if you get approval under the pesticide law, FIFRA, 
uh, that that's uh, the substantial equivalence to a NEPA assessment, even though they're totally different legally in their scope. So I, diff I obviously disagree with that. But um, so in our case, we're, we're requiring or we're, we're asking that they do more robust, fulsome assessments under the statutes that we have, including FIFRA and the Endangered Species Act among them. Um, but yeah, an EIS would be ideal. I agree with you. Um, it's kind of ridiculous that they don't have to. Yes? Didn't they mention at the beginning that Europe, uh, they banned pesticides, some sort of pesticides or something? So why is there not a cooperation between America and Europe, or why is it the case that, I mean, okay, that's very naive, I don't know. But, uh, why is Europe so far ahead, and America's lacking, you know? Yeah, that's often, it's these days. Are they just doing any better? Is well, it's, they are, but it's too new. The ban just came into uh, effect earlier this year. Uh, so oh. it's it's really new. Well, I thought it was two years. Yeah, so. no, it's it's just been it's a it's a two year moratorium, um, and and um, the my understanding is that they that they think it's going to be very positive effect. I mean, obviously they felt like that the science, as I said earlier, was compelling enough that these impacts were very harmful to. And these are Syngenta is a European company and Bayer German, so you know they they obviously had stiff, I'm sure, opposition to that action, but nonetheless uh, felt they had grounds to take it. Uh, and they're being sued, by the way. Bayer and Syngenta are suing the European Union over that ban. Uh, so we're following that litigation. Uh, you know, it's different than what I'm doing, but uh, very important. Um, and I think in the U.S., you know, we're just behind as, as, as usual yeah. these days on environmental issues. So, but I'm hopeful that 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 we can uh, bootstrap that here. Uh, certainly, we're trying, and we're pointing that out to the court every chance we get. Um, here, being in the U.S. Yeah. Yeah. You said Bayer. The German yes. company, Bayern? Yes, they make oh. the Neonics, yes. Oh, okay. oh, all right, I wasn't sure. Yes, Baron Syngenta, those are the two big companies that make them. I was just going to say, though, what, I mean, I don't know a lot about all these environmental um, bans and things like that that happen in Europe, but every time I've studied any of those, it seems like what they do is they end up outsourcing their production to Africa and other places. So even if we're, we're not lagging behind, we're just doing it at home. And, you know, I mean, they're just basically going to Africa and, like, scooping up land, doing land grabs there and, you know, doing whatever they, you know, fishing and dumping mm -hmm. toxic waste there instead of doing it in Europe. So, I don't think they're ahead. They're just, yeah, you know, that's maybe, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't disagree. Yeah. Yes? Um, that one newspaper seemed like he just switched to using pure beads because they were surviving the disease. Is that something that's going to happen? Because it seems like it's almost like a, a clever evolutionary process to make sure that these don't get swept out because they're really sturdy. Yeah, I agree. It's scary, but it's also like, yeah. Nature finds a way. Usually yeah. they're smarter than us. <laughs> I think it's like on the last resort thing. You can see how many precautions had. I mean, because they're not as domesticated, I guess yeah. uh, it, it, it's uh, going to be more expensive. But certainly, I don't think they'll be able to use it at the scale of production that we're currently doing to go get a bag of almonds for five ninety nine, whatever they cost now. You know, um, we've got to alter things and internalize costs a lot better. Uh, work at a smaller scale, at an ecosystem scale, uh, in order to. You know, write the ship on this. Uh, and then another question. So, yeah, like, so should we avoid the <laughs> No, I mean, I think you, know, you, you want to be smart about your food purchases and buy organic, buy local, know who you buy your food from, you know, go to the market, all those things. I'm sure most of you already do. No, I can't. But there might be somebody who could. Sure. Yeah. The raccoons, the raccoons do beekeeping. Um, they do honey. They're having a harder time, though. Is it the same phenomenon, though, where the bees are dying? They're having problems. Um, well, I know they had, the, I know that, um, like, George Judas, and then they were talking about the mites for a long time. Um, they were having problems because of the mites, but... Uh, I hadn't heard anything about the um, any large uh, colony collapse. Not that I asked, anyway. I didn't ask specifically, so. I don't Unfortunately, know. yes. But a lot of most of the colonies died. Mm -hmm. 
George lost all his colonies. Did he lose all of this? All of them in Wyoholi died. Oh, so as far did. as I know, it's only the big island yeah. in Hawaii that got spared so far. Yeah, they still have their production. But on Oahu, there is not yeah. much beekeeping left compared wow. to five years ago. Wow. What do we expect? Yeah. Is there any truth, have you heard anything about the biotech industry wanting to create GMO bees? Uh, uh, they seem to uh, like to capitalize on uh, problems they create for the Yeah, I haven't uh, seen any uh, applications for field trials or anything like that. I've heard some noise about it. They actually have been working together with Harvard University for the last 12 years. And they call it the Robo Bee. It's about one inch big. And they intend to use it for surveillance, for, um, oh, yeah. for pollination also. But, you know, just like they're using the drones, they're also using the bees for uh, ulterior mm -hmm. motives. Awesome. And Monsanto has bought up a company called Theologics. Yes, so they they already have control of all the research about the bees. So we'll see, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I was just going to say that was a very powerful image of all those Chinese standing in the trees. Yeah, how effective. Maybe you use like something like that. that you know, I mean, it, something like that really sends a message of how drastic this whole thing is and how dire it is. I mean, this is our future in 10 years. People hanging out in trees trying to pollinate. <laughs> <laughs> Those are different bees, though. Those are the carpenter bees that you I have. I have many carpenter bees, but not enough to pollinate the bee, but enough. Really? Yes, I do it by hand. Every little guy I have, I made. I don't do that in Manoa. Manoa, they're still bees. <laughs> Maybe I'll bring that in on the 24th. Yeah, you should. Judge, Judge, Judge Chesney, Your Honor, if you may, I'd like to dim the lights and just have a few minutes of these. Just show a picture. <laughs> 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 Okay, we watched the intro and the uh, Q&A session with uh, George Kimbrough.